All right, folks, so what we're going to do in this next video is we're going to look at backstep welding. Backstep welding is a technique that's very effective on thin materials, uh, long sections that are unsupported, or materials such as stainless steel or aluminum that tend to distort. It basically involves placing a short section of weld near one end of the joint and then backing up and welding towards that section again. So in the sample here, we have section one, we back up and weld section two, and then we would do three, four, five, six, and so on until it's completed. The trick is to keep the sections the same length, we run the same travel speeds and use the same basic techniques. In the video that follows, we're going to look at the end result of two plates that were welded with 052 flux core wire at 25 volts. The plates were 1 8 inch uh, mild steel. Now this is not the typical technique that you would use to weld those materials and the purpose of the video is not to show how to make the plates come out completely flat. Rather it's to demonstrate the difference in distortion between one or another. And also it's done in a manner that backstep welding is the only thing that's being used. We're not locking the plates down, we're not restraining them, we're not clamping them, they're not part of another structure that itself is rigid. We're simply welding these plates up with flux core. So we'll take a look at the end result and we'll see what backstep welding can do for you. Uh, this is a stainless steel box, it's got water in it, it's pretty rusty right now. We use it to dunk uh, parts in uh, before we put them in the scrap barrels uh, at the school, which are plastic. Um, but basically, this was actually laid out uh, for welding in sequence. And part of uh, backstep welding is, of course, weld sequencing. This box was made uh, by a student in the class of 2019 uh, named Nick. Nick had actually never welded stainless steel before in his life before he did this. He did this with a uh, Miller Pulse Arc machine. And uh, I just want to show you the basic technique. So. Essentially, uh, we have a backstep technique. It's laid out here. This was the first corner uh, in number one. The welds were laid out, again, one, two, and three. So he actually welded, again, generally, uh, his overall weld went from the bottom to the top, but his individual welds went the opposite direction. The trick is, is to back up from the finish, weld towards it, and then go back and weld towards the weld that you did before. So he welded this side, again, using backstep technique. In terms of sequence work, generally you want to weld opposite sides. So this box was again welded the same technique on the opposite side. There's side number two. Then we went ahead and we welded sides three and four, okay, the opposites. Let me get around here. Sorry about this. There's side number three. And then finally, uh, side number four as marked out right here. Uh, the general rule is to do uh, you know, a, a corner, a corner, and then back and forth opposite. Finally, the box was flipped over, and I'm not gonna flip this over for obvious reasons, but if I crawl down underneath and uh, look up, we can see the sequence markings again on the bottom, okay? So essentially, after this was done, we flipped the box over, and we backstep technique again one side then the opposite side and then over here and over here the backstep technique would, was always welding you know for example we welded towards a corner we welded towards the same corner the second time when we did this side if we welded opposite towards a corner we welded towards a corner this time the result was a box this has not been straightened at all this box is perfectly square the sides are straight, and again, we could set this upside down on the table and it didn't rock at all. Similarly, uh, another box made in the shop, this has been painted, so the markings are gone, same idea. And yet, a third box in the welding shop. Again, same basic technique. So backstep welding is extraordinarily important if you're fabricating anything, but especially thin material. Uh, good morning. I've got uh, the plates that we welded up uh, yesterday uh, sitting in front of me. They're completely cooled down. 
Um, I've gone ahead and put a straight edge across uh, from high spot to high spot and measured the, the, the offset in the middle. And what I have for the plate that we welded uh, continuously is 7 16 of an inch of total distortion on the top and the bottom. And again, you can see that this sucker's got quite a curve to it uh, if I hold it up on the camera. On the ends, uh, the ends that I started on and ended on obviously warped as well. You can see that visually. The distortion is a quarter inch and three eighths. So I have three eighths of an inch, 3.375 as a decimal, total distortion on that plate. Plate number two, we back step welded. Again, same parameters, pretty unreasonably hot for eighth inch material. Um, but again, the purpose of this video was not to show how to weld sheet metal correctly. It was just to demonstrate that the distortion reducing technique works, okay? And it did. Uh, the total distortion on the top and the bottom is quarter inch and five sixteenths respectfully. Um, a quarter inch is uh, three sixteenths less than what we had on the other plate. Five sixteenths is an eighth inch less. Uh, the ends I had an eighth of an inch and close to five sixteenths. I'm going to call it five sixteenths to be fair. Total distortion on the other end. That gives me an average of a quarter inch total distortion. So by back step welding, I had a quarter inch average distortion, I should say. By welding continuous, I had three eighths of an inch average distortion. That's a 50% reduction in distortion by simply back step welding. We did nothing else, okay? So we, we, we used the back step technique Again, the overall settings were really, really, really too hot for uh, sheet metal. And I don't want you to be confused with the first video where I said get it hot and keep it hot. The fact of the matter is here, I, I'm not doing multiple passes, so I can't get this hot and keep it hot. The heat is going to be isolated to the joint. The surrounding base material didn't get hot at all as I welded this. I could have picked this up with my bare hands. And we'll talk more about that in the last video when we talk about why the techniques work in the first place. But for right now, another tool in the toolbox, back step welding. Use it when you can. It works, folks.